Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar, Take It or Leave It, Triaging Digital Evidence with Macquisition. My name is Julia O'Shea and I'm the Global Marketing Manager here at Blackbag. Before we kick things off today, there are a few notes that I would like to review. We are recording this webinar, so we'll share an on-demand version after the webinar is complete. If you have any questions, please submit them in the questions window and we will answer them throughout or in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. I'm excited to introduce our speaker today, Stephanie Thompson. Stephanie has been a digital forensics analyst working in the federal government space for 15 years prior to coming to Blackbag. Her background is primarily in counterterrorism and counterintelligence investigations, but she has also worked closely with federal law enforcement agencies on a routine basis. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Management Information Systems from George Mason University and has a Master's of Forensic Science degree from George Washington University. Thanks for joining us today, everyone, and welcome, Stephanie. If you are ready, I will hand it over to you to get started. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. And hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to show you guys the new triage capabilities available in Macquisition. I know it's been a highly desired feature for a while now. Uh, first, I, what I'll do is I'll go over kind of what the capabilities entail and give you kind of a background as to why we decided to add this into the new release. And then I will walk through the tool so you can see it live and see it in action. So without further ado, um, so before I actually go into what some of these capabilities are, just to kind of give a little bit of background, we have um, a lot of people that had requested a way to quickly be able to look at the data before acquisition to know what files would be of the most interest. This could be either they're on a limited search warrant to where they are only allowed to look at certain things it could be they're on site and only have like five minutes or you know whatever amount of time to be able to get as much information as possible uh, so we added the this triage capability to where you can actually look at the data preview the data even do a little bit of searching and filtering of the data before you acquire so this triage can happen in both the live and the booted modes I do have a note on here if you, we have some legacy versions of acquisition for some of the older Macs, this triage capability will not be in those legacy versions. But if you're able to boot into the, the most recent version of acquisition, you will, will be able to triage. And this triage includes a browser view, which we'll, I'll show in more detail during the demo. Uh, you can do a folder structure, you can preview files, see some basic metadata. And then you also have the search view. You, we do some a few filtering capabilities as well as uh, some keyword searching. And any of these files or folders that you see in the browser or search view that you know you want to collect, we give you the ability to add those to your data collection from those views so you don't have to go back and forth between different tabs. And then we also added another key feature I think is being able to export into an L01. Previously we had where you could export to a folder or export to a sparse image. And now we've added the L01 to make it more user friendly with other forensic tools. So without further ado, I am going to just walk through Macquisition Live. So um, if you're familiar with Macquisition, Previously, uh, these, these volumes that are showing up on my desktop are standard with like the previous versions. So you have the application where you go to run the application. It also has the user guide and the quick start guide, which have been updated for this release. MQ data is the storage volume that's on the dongle itself. So if you have the 120 gig or the one terabyte SSD, this is the storage area. So if you want to save your acquisition straight onto the dongle and only have that one external drive. And then MQ license is all the licensing information. So I am going to run my acquisition. And this will work pretty standard as the previous version. 
this is prompting you for the admin password. If you don't have the admin password, you can click cancel. And again, this is in the live mode and you will be able to run restricted. So you'll be running as whatever user is logged into the system. But I happen to have the admin password in this case. So I am going to insert that now. And now Macquisition is going to load. And when it pops up, in this case, since I am running live and I have the admin password, I don't have to worry about File Vault 2 or anything like that. But I wanted to also mention that if File Vault, say you boot into Macquisition and File Vault 2 is enabled, you will need that admin username and password to be able to triage the data. Um, so it brings you to the, the case details screen. And most of this is the same as before. You would put in your basic case information, your name, the case number, your examiner name, your agency name, any comments that you may want to include in the case or in the log file. You can do that here. Notice on the, on the right-hand side, we did make one change where we give you the ability to change the current system time. Uh, we have noticed uh, if, you, if the, say, it's a laptop that the battery completely drains, the system time gets reset and it's like a 1976 or 1979 date. In fact, I think I have a little image. Um, so it says like the current machine time is 1979. We will prompt you that this system clock appears to be incorrect and you'll see this little yellow warning. So we do give you the, op the ability to change the system time so you can make it more accurate. Again, document, documentation will be the key in this case. You are modifying the system clock, but we want you to be able to have an accurate image or an, or an accurate acquisition. So we give you the ability here, should you need to do that. And then as if you just want to not change the system time, but you may need to change the time zone for your logs and reporting, you can do that in this dropdown up here. So here are our two new tabs, our browser and search tab. Browser, if you're familiar with Blacklight, it will look very similar to Blacklight. You have, I'm making this a little bigger for you guys. Um, so it's just a, a file structure that you can see here. Um, one thing to note, if you are starting to examine more devices with Catalina, there was a change with Catalina where your um, your hard time hard drive does show some multiple volumes here. I also have boot camp running in this case, so I do have a Windows partition. But these four right here are your main uh, Mac partitions. You'll see Mac SSD, that's the name of my specific hard drive. This is actually a, um, a like a read-only volume with all the operating system files. And then you also have this data. If you're looking in Finder, it may say like, in my case, Mac SSD dash data. This is, this, this is that user uh, volume that's gonna have your files of interest more than likely. So when you're triaging, this data is probably the area you're gonna wanna focus on with all the user files. And just like in Blacklight, you can double click to go into folders if you don't want to like, you know, do all the expand the folders and get into like multiple uh, levels of folders. You can just double click and just see the files in that folder. Um, I actually created a folder on my desktop with files to preview just to kind of make it a little easier in the demo to show you files and what the previews and stuff look like. But again, Blacklight, you have, we have the ability, you can go back to a previous folder up here on this bar up here, you can do that here as well. Uh, you might notice date access are all today. Uh, Macquisition is, mod is changing the access date because you are accessing those files. You're running live on the system. So that's another thing to make note of when you're documenting what you did on a system, that ac date access will be modified when you're using Macquisition and doing this triage. 
If I were to select some of these files, I can preview. I have a preview pane right here. I, it all defaults to like a scale, it puts it in scale, but you can also do a full view as well to see how big the file is. We have some metadata down here, down below as well. And for the preview, it works on anything that's supported by Quick Look, which is part of the Mac OS. Um, so pictures, videos, office files, PDFs, you'll be able to preview here. So if I, the StockX, for instance, I can preview that over here. So images, text files, let me go back to scale. These are all previewable in this preview pane over here. Um, if you're wondering where some of these, if you get lost in folders in multiple layers of folders, you also have the file path down here so you can see what folder those files are located in. And then this little arrow we used to have, if you're used to seeing in the previous versions, we had a um, refresh disk button at the top. That's now what this arrow is. You see refresh device list. That's going to be, that took place of that button that used to be at the top. So um, next is the search. So again, we show some basic uh, filtering capabilities. You can filter on location, where, where the file may be on the, on the drive, uh, the file name, file extension, file size, file date. Uh, if I go down here, you can, you can filter on created, modified, or access date. If I select one of these, you have the option of doing in between dates, before, after, or exactly a specific date. And now for location, we already have some pre built folders in here, some of your more common folders. I did want to point out on the browser, we saw the Mac SSD and we just saw something called data. In this view, you see the actual full path, it's system volumes data. So this is where your user partition is going to be. But you can also drill down to specific folders as well. So for instance, in my case, I know I have folders on my desktop or files on my desktop. So for ease of time, I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit search. And so now I've, I've filtered to only show me the files that are on my desktop. If I wanted to make it even lower, I could, you know, for instance, maybe only look at JPEGs. And now I've narrowed my search down even more to six files. And again, these are previewable, just like in the browser tab. So you have the preview and the metadata panes over here on the right. If I reset, it's gonna reset everything except for the location. So I can still stay in that same location even if I reset. So if I play around with different filters or different keywords, I can just reset and just search again. And then I'm back to whatever folder I may have of interest. So for the content searches, if you don't have binary or documents checked, you're mainly going to just be searching just plain ASCII text, you know, text files. If you know you need to search within, like say a Word document, for instance, since like DocX is pretty much like a zip file, you have to select the search documents in order for it to search within the docx file. Same with binary you know, for say like Outlook Mail or PDFs, is if there's other files that you're gonna want a keyword search in, you're gonna need to make sure to search binary files. If you don't have any of these, you're only searching just plain text. Um, so I know I have a couple of files with the word BMW in here. So if I click search, nothing's coming up. I do know I have a docx that has the word BMW in here, so I'm gonna hit search document. Now I'm getting my information that I'm expecting. So if you, if you are running searches on the scene and you're really in a rush, but you are pretty sure that a word is in a file, just make sure these binary and documents are not searched unless you have these checked because it does take a little more time to search in those documents so we get, we want to give you the option um if i search if i added the search binary i think i have a pdf as well so if i hit search now i have six folders 
One thing I, I forgot to mention in the browser, I see this movie here, very similar to Blacklight. I can actually play the movie in this preview pane. I can also do the scroll bar and just kind of scroll through as well. So hopefully that'll help you quickly triage videos on scene. Um, let's see, so we can reset. Um, one thing to note maybe for like the date, if you have um, link files, shortcuts, uh, those will actually be what pops up when you do the, the date filter. So if like say the original file, I have a link file to a Word doc, the link file may have been accessed yesterday, but say the actual Word doc wasn't opened in the past two months or whatever. If I did a search for yesterday, the link file may come up. So just keep in mind the data that you're actually pulling may not be what you were expecting. Well, let's see. So one thing I also wanted to point out, let me reset and search again. I had mentioned um, on the slide previously that if you know you have, if you're doing your triage in the browser and the search, and you know you have files of interest that you are going to want to uh, acquire, I can select as many as I am interested in. If you have right click turned on, you can right click, add selected items to collection. You can also, if you don't have the right click turned on, you can go to action up here and add selected items to collection. So that way, if I do that, now when I go to my collection tab, you may be familiar with this from the previous version of Macquisition. We already have some pre-configured files that you may want to collect logically system data, user files, but down below under additional files, anything that we had added from the browser or the search tab will show up down here. Now there's not a checkbox next to it because if you have added it to the selection from the other tabs, it's going to automatically collect them. If you decide before you acquire that you don't want a specific file, just hit this little minus button and you will get, be given the option to remove it. And then um, again, I am logged in as admin. So just kind of reinforcement. Um, I'm able to see all the users here. If you had to run restricted and run as the current user, you would only be seeing whatever user was logged in. But in this case, I since I logged in as admin, I could collect information from all the users if I needed to. Um, let's see. So similar to before, um, if I select any of these, I have the collection summary on the right-hand side. It tells me where it's pulling that file from. And then destination, I can set the destination of where I want to put my image or my acquisition. So I mentioned in the beginning, MQ data is the storage partition of the dongle itself. So if I wanted to select that, and hit open. You can create a new folder. I've already created one previously, um, so I'm not gonna do it again, but I wanted to at least show you, I'm gonna bring this LO1 into Blacklight just to show you kind of how it works. But I've already done it, so I'm gonna hit cancel for right now. Format, this is where we could do folder or sparse image previously, and now we've added LO1. If you needed to segment, you could do that right here. And then you have the hashing. It's telling you with all the items I have selected, I have my collection size is about two gigs, which is pretty manageable. And then if I was ready, I could hit start. And then before I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring that LO1 into Blacklight and just kind of show you. But before we go there, just wanted to highlight nothing has changed on the disk image tab. Um, Again, I'm logged in as admin. I can dump physical memory if I needed to. I could just do a physical image of the APFS container. All of this functionality is the same. And another thing I wanted to show on the LO1 itself, um, we do add a log file as well. So this case details.log, we have the LO1, so 
If you would put information in the case details tab, it would show up here. And then we also give you the start time and the stop, stop, stop time so you have that for your records. So now if I were to go into Blacklight, I already have a case created just to, for ease of time. So I brought in my L01 and then um, I'm gonna go to the browser so you can just kind of see L01. The these are the files that I included in my L01. Notice here, I have additional files, system files, user files. That's gonna go back to, if you go back to my acquisition to the collection, how we have these sections, it's gonna split your files up into these sections in the L01, L01 too, to keep it somewhat organized. So these um, files that I know are of interest to me, I can go straight there in Blacklight and go to additional files. And it also keeps your folder path too. So I know I copied everything from my desktop, so and it, it keeps that, that full folder path. And then I can proceed as normal. I can see the hex view of the file. I could see the preview, metadata. Blacklight will work on the file just as normal and you can proceed with your analysis. Um, let's see. So, I think that is pretty much Macquisition in a nutshell. Julie, has any questions come in at all? Yes, we've had a lot of great questions come in while you've been presenting. So let's start with, if I get a pop-up saying I need to grant full disk access to Macquisition, but I don't have the password, am I out of luck? And are there limitations running restricted? Awesome, that's a good question. So uh, with full disk access, you do need the admin password in order to do that. But if you don't have the admin password, you can hit close and you can still continue to run as restricted. So you will be able to get the information for the user that's logged in. Um, you'll probably get some additional pop-ups that um, it needs to access like documents, downloads. Um, that doesn't need admin password in order to do that. So um, you can still run restricted without having to do the, F, the full disk, disk access. Perfect, thanks for clarifying that. How about um, what format of drive do you recommend we use as a collection drive? Oh, that's another good question. Um, so since you know we're dealing mainly with Macs, uh, we do recommend that you save it onto a drive that's formatted as HFS plus. Um, technically, you could do it FAT32 or XFAT, but we've had several issues in the past with drive failures when you when we do it that way. Um, and with you running live, you won't be able to export to NTFS. So we always recommend doing the HFS plus when possible. Makes sense. How about, will the access date change if you collect without browsing? Does the date access change only in live mode or in boot mode too? So it's mainly, it's gonna do it definitely in live mode because you're gonna access the files, whether you're previewing or not, it's going to access those files. Um, so, cause in order for you to even see it like in the folder structure in the browser, just to see it in that folder structure, the access date will change. Great. Another question that came in, can you get live memory without the admin password? No, you don't, you need the admin to be able to even see the memory. If I run restricted, I would not even have the option to be able to dump the memory. Sounds good, okay. Is the triage feature available when booting acquisition from the dongle? Yes, oh, as long as you're booting into the latest release of, of acquisition. How about, can a list of file extensions be specified in the attributes? So let me go back real quick. So unfortunately, I, it only gives you, actually that's a good question. So let me, let me see if it will let me do multiple. 
I don't think it will. I think you're only going to be able to do one extension at a time. Yeah. Yeah, so you, it will only do one extension at a time. Got it. Okay. But I can I can also take that back just to get clarification and make sure. Um, but that's what it looks like. It's just one. Okay, that sounds great. We can always clarify that and um, reach out personally to um, after this. Awesome. Um, and of course, is the new version of Macquisition already available for download on Black Bag's website? It is as of last week. <laughs> I was going to say, I can mention that too. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Perfect. Um, let's see here. I think that is a good amount of questions we had coming in for now. And if there's anything else that we didn't get a chance to get to, uh, we're going to reach out individually and answer those questions. We also will be doing a follow-up blog. And again, this will be available on demand. So if anyone wants to come back and reference this, we'll have that, um, we'll be sending that out as soon as this is complete. So um, thank you, Stephanie. I think this was a great webinar and we walked through all the new features and um, acquisition involving triaging. And again, these are all available to download now on our website. Um, it's Macquisition 2020 R1, and you can find that in the software download section. And um, also, again, don't forget, we have a blog post too that kind of goes over the features too. So if people want to refer to that as well, they're more than welcome to. Definitely. And there are some, some awesome screenshots in there too, of uh, real world examples in there. Um, again, if you submit a question and we didn't get to it, we will reach out to you individually to follow up and stay tuned for the recording of this webinar. If you want to follow us on social for more, to learn more and see any of our products and services in action, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And as Stephanie said, subscribe to our blog at blackbagtech.com. All right, well, thank you for joining everyone. Thank you, Stephanie, and have a great day. Bye.